I honestly don't even know where to start. Oh my god, no, why would I, like, I'm, I'm literally gonna start crying before we even start filming this video! You have to be willing to find the light, though. You have to be willing to believe in yourself and to believe in your story and to believe that there's more than what you're going through and that what you're going through is going to bring you further into who you're supposed to be and your calling and find the good in it. <laughs> Let's get right into it, guys. 2018 was the craziest year of my entire life. Let's reflect on what the heck happened in 2018. Starting off in January, we were in competition prep mode with 247, which means we were having rehearsals three nights a week that were running until like 4 a.m., which was just crazy hours, and it was really, really intense training. I incredibly we were at one of the biggest hip-hop competitions in the world, and we ended up placing third place and then being able to travel Los Angeles, take class, explore the city for about a week after that. So as soon as we got back from LA, I was about to audition for Da Costa Talent, which is the top agency in Vancouver for dancers and essentially actors as well that double as both. And they were my dream agency. And as, when I moved to Vancouver, I had told myself, I was like, I will not sign with anybody else until I get to sign with Da Costa. I auditioned at the end of February. It was an audition process of a bunch of cuts at the very beginning. And then we had to do callbacks on the next day where we did an acting piece and a solo to have our final interview with them. And so in February, I officially signed with my dream agency and it has just been a ride ever since then. So immediately following my signing, I got pulled into an audition room for the show called Sacred Lies. Sacred Lies was going to be a new TV series on Facebook Watch that was based around a girl that had lost both of her hands. So essentially her arms ended at the same place as mine with both of her hands chopped off so she had none. And when I went into this audition I had no idea what I was going in for, what the role was, what the job was, and all of a sudden I'm at this table with I want to say like over 20 people and they just say so what's your story? And so this audition conversation interview, it was with the director, the writer, the actress, Elena Kimporas, and then a bunch of the other producers, assistant directors, the whole team was there and they're listening. Really, really crazy because my story actually really lined up with the character Minnow in the story. She gets her hands chopped off at the age of 16 and I lost my hand at the age of 16 and she gets phantom pains and I had phantom pains and she works through trying prosthetics and figuring out that prosthetics aren't right for her. She just feels like she's not herself with them and that was exactly like me and why I don't genuinely wear prosthetics is because I know I'm supposed to be it sounds weird, but I'm a one-handed person. Like, it's like I am an amputee and I'm so capable with my arm that I don't feel the need to cover it up and I'm, I'm just so thankful for the amount of room that I do have left. And so this journey with Elena is I ended up getting full on board with her, mentoring both mentally and physically. So mentally talking about those moments of realization of before and after and adapting to a new life, adapting to phantom pains, prosthetics, what people think around you, people that bully you, people that question you. It was this really incredible mental and spiritual journey that we went on together of really exploring this character by being very raw and I just had to be like the rawest version of myself giving her everything that I had, every memory that I had to allow her to portray this double amputee correctly and honestly and she had the biggest heart to do that. She's the most incredible actor to the state that I've ever worked with. Blows my mind every single day. Um, so working on Sacred Lies, that was about a month of prep which was really just getting prosthetics together, figuring out how to puppeteer her rod, how an amputee would push her hair back, how she might like open up a book. After the month of preparation, which was before we even started shooting, I was on set with her every single day watching every movie on the monitor of how she was picking up things, making sure it was honest and real and uh, authentic to amputees and she took on this role like no other and she just became one of my dearest, closest friends. So Sacred Lies was a journey of about four months, so a, a month of prep, three months of shooting, every single day on set, long days. We were there from first call to the very last people to leave, which was coming out to be 16 hour days on regular. There is nowhere else I would rather be though. It was the most incredible opportunity to share my story with so many people and that was really like lit this fire inside of me for sharing my story. It was ultimately the biggest step of, of faith. It just led to an amazing discovery of who I am and what my story means and actually it was my first realization of the effect that it can have on people and the cha the lives that it can change and the, the potential it has there to reach and so Sacred Lives changed my life. It was the most incredible experience. I guess that led me to about May. I was consistently on that. And also in the March of May, I got to audition 
with my company 247 that I was still in. We got to audition for America's Got Talent, the live audition rounds, which was absolutely insane. I got to get interviewed for it. We did a couple different interviews, a bunch of behind the scenes shooting of dancing, speaking, warming up behind the stage. I met Tyra Banks, Simon, all of those crazy people. Another really cool thing that I never thought I would ever have the opportunity to do that happened this year. And after that, with 247 as well, we did World of Dance dance competition in Los Angeles and we placed first, which we all worked so hard for that. And it was, it was really amazing to end off the season with the first place win. And coming to the end of April here is when Descendants 3 came back into town, which I was back on it again and I can't share any information about this, but essentially for Descendants 3, we were in rehearsals for the month of April and we shot for May, June, and July. And this is going to be coming out in 2019, so stay posted. And in case you guys didn't know, the previous year I had shot Descendants 2 where I was a pirate in Uma's pirate gang and we did a couple dance numbers and scenes and stuff. And so for those three months, I was pretty much head on into Descendants. We wrapped in August, which led into shooting with a couple supplement companies, Beyond Yourself and Popeyes, where we shot a little mini documentary on my life and my story. It was really, really cool to do that in a gym setting because I've been filmed at dance before, but I haven't actually done a professional fitness shoot. So that happened in July of 2018. It's actually when Sacred Lies premiered. So it was immediately, almost like a month and a half after we stopped shooting, we started releasing episodes. And so that's when all of the press began for Sacred Lies, which was so incredible to hear these people asking questions about portraying an amputee character and how Elena got to share all of her work and all of her back experience that she did and all of the work that we did together to build the character Minnow and she was speaking about it in interviews from panels to Comic Con to different broadcasting stations. I found this wonderful girl, Christy Sita, who's- Her name was Christy Sita. And shout out to Christy Sita. Christy Sita again. And we worked through like everything physical and also psychological. We got really close, we became like sisters throughout the shoot. She was there every single day of shooting, watching the monitor. She would watch every little thing. Christy. She had so much to do with this process and Absolutely. I wouldn't have been able to tell Minnow's story because Christy is an amputee and she lost her hand actually the same age around when Minnow lost hers. Yep. So she walked me through everything physically and emotionally that the character is going through. And, and she worked with Elena every single day, but she's this incredibly inspiring, beautiful, strong person, and she just committed to teaching Elena how to interpret this character and what that experience was like. And in that time, my hours, I would get up at 4 a.m., I would go to the gym, I would come home, I would do my reading, I would go to set from like 6 a.m. to 12, I would go to rehearsal from 12 till 8 p.m. for Descendants, and then I would go back to set from 8 p.m. to 12 p.m. for Sacred Lies, and I would wake up 4 a.m., do it all again the next day. Really just getting to share our work, which was I keep saying incredible and I keep saying a dream, but it, it's all been incredible and it's all been a dream, so I don't really know what else to say. And so as the episodes continued to release, I was on live chat every single Friday when they would be released. I'd be talking to the fans, answering their questions about different prosthetic moves every single week for about two months straight as we were releasing all 10 episodes of Sacred Lies. If you haven't seen them, go watch them on Facebook Watch. And so coming out of Descendants, after about seven months of being on set, I was also doing my Bible reading every morning and every night. I was going to the gym every Every single morning because I knew I was in a professional job as a dancer as well as a mentor so I had to keep up my training I had to keep my body moving and active and and treat it like an athlete in that time and it was it was crazy to keep like my head level and to keep my faith my priority and really keeping stepping into that and really leaning on that resilience and that strength I, I needed it in every day I mean I was so exhausted that I could not do it on my own and I kept just saying like, Lord lead me, like I, I'm so exhausted, I'm so tired, but I know you've called me to this and I know you've given me this day. So I just kept praying for strength. That was the main thing that got me through those last couple months and, and following the seven months between Sacred Lies and Descendants, I I just had to take a moment to like breathe, recuperate, relaunch Cita Fit, which I had so many things that were going on in my mind of what I wanted to do, but I was so busy with film that I had no time to work on my online business. And so I took those next two months to really continue to build my social presence with Instagram. I launched my own YouTube channel as well as my YouTube channel that I have with Becky, um, but I had officially launched my own channel and I really dove in full on to those two items between YouTube and Cetafit and I took those head on for those last couple months. Which leads us to pretty much December. And December, YouTube changed everything. I had uploaded this video of my story about a month prior to and all of a sudden my views were going up out of nowhere and it was within like 
pretty much five days just kept going up and it kept going up and my subscribers I had like I think I had like a hundred subscribers maybe Then the next couple days we got up to 50,000 subscribers and within five days I pulled like 2.5 million views across this channel build this community overnight with you guys and your support of my story and your curiosity of my life I just ah, it blows my mind and suddenly we had like fan pages going up we had people reposting my videos. I had thousands and thousands and thousands of shares on. So I just want to say thank you so much for all of your guys' support in this past month, in this past year, for those people that's been here before. Thank you for giving me this life that I have an opportunity to make my career out of just sharing my life and and my adversities and my honesty and my faith with you guys. I want you guys to know out there that I see you. You are not some girl or some boy behind the screen, but I see you. I see your comments. I see your likes. I see you. Like, think of me as a person. Think of me as your friend. I'm not just a character on YouTube, guys. I am a mentor. I'm a friend. And I'm just so excited to explore and hop into 2019 with all of you guys by my side. And as we continue to build this community and build this family on YouTube, Lord, Lord, I turned it into a prayer. <laughs> As we build this community of just supportive people, that is what I want this space, this community to be because I think YouTube is so hungry for this and there's so many people that have taken YouTube in a different direction and I just want to be this like honest rock that you guys can go to and this place where you can find hope and where you can find light and faith and, and you could just be revived a little bit in the situations that you're going through knowing that it does get better and knowing that you are capable of overcoming anything that's in your way and then I can't wait to keep mentoring you guys and talking to you guys and training you guys I just cannot wait to do this next year with you and melts my heart and it makes me so thankful that God has blessed me with this audience and bless me with this story. It's an honor to share it. It's an honor to be this person on the internet for you guys to turn to. And thank you for supporting me, loving on me, sharing my videos, spreading the word. God, thank you. So I just keep turning this into a prayer. I can't stop. Yeah, I'm going to end it there. 2018 was incredible and 2019, I can't wait to see what you hold. And I'm so excited to bring you guys on this journey this year. 2019 is our year. Thank you guys. I love you so much. From the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. I can't wait for 2019. Okay, let's do this. I love you guys so much. Thank you for everything, and I will see you soon. Bye.